participation here of our first efforts in two-way radio. I'll welcome you officially here in just a moment, but this is Bob Barnett. Yes, good to talk. Uh, Herr Grovener, please. Herr Grovener, bitte. Yes, Mr. Grovener, this is Bob Barnett in Chicago. Sir, it's a pleasure to talk to you. As you know, this call today is the first, uh, this is the first international call that we've made on the cellular system. And since your great-grandfather had such a start of this whole industry, namely Alexander Graham Bell, we just appreciate so much you're taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. Let me tell the people here what you said. Uh, Mr. Grovener has said that his great-grandfather would be very proud that, it's, that this call is going over the cellular technology through the landlines to a satellite across to Europe and completing to him in his hotel. And we hear each other very, very well, don't we? Sir, I over there on business, and the sun is just setting now on over the hills. Well, I'll tell you, the sun just came out in Chicago, and let me uh, let me conclude this call, and we ask when you come back to the United States, we'll talk, and we'd love to have you come out to Chicago and see our system firsthand, as you had, had planned to do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you were all in a little bit of history on that one. The very first call of its kind. Thank you very much, Bob. Now, well, ladies and gentlemen, that kind of uh, winds up the inform of a uh, rather formal portion of our program. Uh, Mr. Barnett, what, what is the, the significance of the cellular system uh, for telephone consumers? I think there's three uh, primary points in comparing this with the existing uh, mobile telephone. Uh, the quality of the transmission, the privacy of the conversation, and the availability of the service. Beyond uh, the people who have radio uh, or telephones in their cars, what does the technology mean for phone service uh, at, at large? I mean, is this eventually going to replace hard lines? Could you elaborate on that a little bit? We see this today as being a business tool, one that people who have a need to make and receive calls, be in touch with their office, do business while on the road. That's the primary application that we see currently. So the market would be for business people involved in sales and construction, running companies, real estate, items like that. We don't see at this point in time that it would replace the telephone service that we know ordinary residential customers have. What kind of a, uh, a market do you see, uh, first of all, here in Chicago and secondly, nationwide? Our immediate market research says that if all things were here today, 100,000 people in Chicago would want this service. Uh, we see that growing uh, to 300,000, so in our Ameritech region, the number goes up from there. Nationwide, probably 3 million customers would want this in the very near future. When does uh, this uh, system uh, going to expand? I mean, when can the rest of the country expect to see this? There are currently construction by uh, both the wireline and non-wireline companies in the top 30 cities. Uh, the next cities that we would see would be New York, the Miami, L.A., cities such as that would be online. And when, when do you expect those cities to be online? They would be online uh, in mid-84. And in our region here, for the Ameritech Company, we will be bringing online in 1984, Milwaukee, Detroit, and Cincinnati. How did the experiment work? When did you first start actually using the system? We applied for the FCC uh, permission to turn on this system in, in June of 1983. And we had fully tested it at that point in time. And we've been waiting for the uh, FCC approval. 
uh, which came to us last October, or which came to us last Thursday, October 6th.